Chapter 9, Lesson 1, Simple Organic Compounds. We begin today looking at what we'll learn. Right here's our objectives. Students will explain why carbon is able to form in many different compounds. We'll describe how saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons differ. And thirdly, we will identify isomers of organic compounds. Let's get into it. Earth's crust contains less than 1% carbon, yet all living things on Earth are made of carbon-containing compounds. Carbon's ability to bond easily and form compounds is the basis of life on Earth. A carbon atom has four electrons in its outer energy level, so it can form four covalent bonds with as many as four other atoms. When carbon atoms form four covalent bonds, they obtain the stability of a noble gas with eight electrons in their outer energy level. One of carbon's most frequent partners in forming covalent bonds is hydrogen. Substances can be classified into two groups, those derived from living things and those derived from non-living things, such as shown in figure one. Most of the substances associated with living things contain carbon and hydrogen. These substances were called organic compounds, which means derived from a living organism. However, in 1828, scientists discovered that living organisms are not necessarily to form organic compounds. Despite this, scientists still use the term organic compound for most compounds that contain carbon. Where does this term come from? It talks about the items that contain carbon and are often associated with living things. So, for example, if you look at this picture, you've got this rock formation of what looks like uh, the Grand Canyon, non-living materials, just rock and dirt. And here you've got, obviously, people and plants and life going on with these living materials made up of carbon. As we continue, we learn that there are a constant bond between carbon and hydrogens, and one of those prevalent things it's called are hydrocarbons. Many comp compounds are made up of only carbon and hydrogen. A compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen atoms is called a hydrocarbon. The simplest hydrocarbon is methane, the primary component of natural gas. If you have a gas stove or a gas furnace in your home, methane is usually used as the fuel that's burned in these appliances. Methane consists of a single carbon atom covalently bonded to form hydrogen atoms to four hydrogen atoms. The formula for methane is CH4. Figure two shows a model of the methane molecule and its structure of the formula. Here's what it would look like if you could see what that molecule looks like. And then here is the actual drawn out formula of those dot diagrams. These lines refer to the covalent bonds that are happening between the carbon and the hydrogen. In a structural formula, the line between one atom and another atom represents a pair of electrons shared between the two atoms. So see, here you can see the two dots, and here that line represents that they're sharing those atoms in that covalent bond. This pair forms a single bond. Methane contains four single bonds, one, two, three, four, if you count all of them. Now visualize the removal of one of these hydrogen atoms from a methane molecule in figure 3a. A fragment of the molecule called a methyl group, CH3, would remain. The methyl group, they then can form a single bond with another methyl group. If two methyl groups bond with each other, the result is two carbon hydrocarbon ethane, or C2H6, which is shown in its structural formula in figure 3b. So if you go down here and you look at methane, CH4, you take off one of the hydrogens and you put on another CH3 on it and attach two of these together, you're going to get what's called ethane, or C2H6. In each of these examples, you have what is considered a methyl group, which is CH3, and it wants to form another bond with something that needs it to form another bond. So you have two electrons that want to be shared, and it forms ethane. You have methane, and now with two of those, you have methane in this case. Here's another example of that expanding to a larger area. You have maybe what you're familiar with, propane gas. Propane gas is actually C3H8, which is three of these methyl groups put together. Butane in, for example, one of these butane lighters is another example of this type of gas as it can form C4H10. That's the chemical formula for that type of gas. All four of those methyl groups or saturated hydrocarbons have similar characteristics as their gases that are used and burnt because of their properties. Methane and ethane are members of a series of molecules in which carbon and hydrogen atoms are joined by single covalent bonds. When all the bonds in a hydrocarbon are single bonds, the molecule is called a saturated hydrocarbon. Single for saturated. It is called saturated because no additional hydrogen atoms can be added to the molecule. The carbon atoms are saturated with hydrogen atoms. The formation of larger hydrocarbons occurs in a way similar to the formation of ethane. A hydrogen atom is removed from ethane and replaced by a CH3 group. 
Propane with three carbon atoms is the third member of the series of saturated hydrocarbons. Butane has four carbon atoms. Both of these hydrocarbons are shown in figure four. The names and the chemical formulas of a few of the smaller saturated hydrocarbons are listed in table one. Saturated hydrocarbons are named with an A and E ending. Other name for these hydrocarbons is alkanes. What is a saturated hydrocarbon? If you look at the definition again, it's saturated because it cannot have any other hydrogens added to it when there's a certain number of carbons in the compound. These short hydrocarbon chains have low boiling points, so they evaporate and burn easily. That makes methane a good fuel for your stove or furnace. Propane is used in gas grills and lanterns and to heat the air in hot air balloons. Butane often is used as fuel for camp stoves and lighters. Longer hydrocarbons are found in oils and waxes. Carbon can form many long chains that contain hundreds of even thousands of carbon atoms. These extremely long chains make up many of the plastics that you use today. So again, here are those different examples. You've got methane, a methyl group. You've got two carbons, it's an ethane. You've got three carbons, it's propane. Four carbons, it's butane. Those are called saturated hydrocarbons. Unsaturated hydrocarbons. Carbons also form hydrocarbons with double and triple bonds. In a double and triple bond, two pairs of electrons are shared between two atoms, and in a triple bond, three pairs of electrons are shared. Hydrocarbons with double or triple bonds are called unsaturated hydrocarbons. This is because the carbon atoms are not saturated with hydrogen atoms. Ethene, E-N-E, -E, the simplest unsaturated hydrocarbon, has two carbon atoms joined by a double bond. Propene is an unsaturated hydrocarbon with three carbon atoms. Some unsaturated hydrocarbons have more than one double bond. Butadiene has four carbon atoms and two double bonds. The structures of the ethene, propene, and butadiene are shown in figure five. If we look at figure five, here's what those items are. Here's ethene with the double bond. Here's propene with a double bond. And here's butadiene with two double bonds that has still two, three, and four carbons. You know that each of those words sounds a lot similar to ethane, propane, and butane. The only difference is now that you're showing that it's an unsaturated hydrocarbon is that it changes its wording here. That's how scientists tell those things apart. It was A-N-E when it was saturated hydrocarbons with single bonds. It's E-N-E -E if it has a double bond inside of it. That nomenclature, that way that they name it, is just how they tell the difference between those subtle changes in those structures. So here was methane, ethane, propane, and butane. You can see the difference between ethene, propene, and butadiene because it has those double bonds. So they're unsaturated hydrocarbons. Unsaturated compounds with at least one double bond are named with an E-N-E -E ending. Notice that the names of the compounds have an E-N-E -E ending. These compounds are called alkenes. So very similar in their naming and very similar in their structure, just subtle differences between how many bonds they have and therefore how many hydrogens are attached to those carbon molecules. Triple bonds. Unsaturated hydrocarbons also can have triple bonds, as in a structure of ethene, Y-N-E, shown in figure 6. Here's your example of ethene or acetylene. Ethene, commonly called acetylene, is a gas used for welding because it produces high heat as it burns. Welding torches mix acetylene and oxygen before burning. These unsaturated compounds are called alkenes. Mr. Shane learned in shop class in high school how to use an acetylene torch. It looks kind of like this, in which you're burning and melting metal, and then you're going to melt two pieces of metal next to each other, and that's what sticks them together. That's called welding. Hydrocarbon isomers. Suppose you had 10 blocks that you could snap together in a different arrangement, like Legos. Each arrangement of the same 10 blocks is different. The atoms in an organic molecule also can have different arrangements, but still have the same molecular formula. Compounds that have a same molecular formula, but different arrangements or structures are called isomers. Two isomers, butane and isobutane, are shown in figure 7. Let's take a look. So here you have 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons in each and 10 hydrogens in each, but they look different. That's why it's called an isomer, because it's arranged a little bit differently. So you've got those pieces of Lego that you put together to form one thing, then you put them together to form another. They're still the same pieces, but they're in a different arrangement in science or in our molecular structure. We call those isomers. By now you may be confused about how organic compounds are named. Figure 8 explains the system that is used to name organic compounds. So here's an example in figure 8. More than 1 million organic compounds have been discovered and created. Thousands of new ones in synthesized in laboratories every year. To keep track of all these carbon-containing molecules, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, or the IUPAC, devised a special naming system for a nomenclature for organic compounds. As shown here, different parts of the organic compound's name, its root, suffix, and prefix, give information about its size and structure. So there are these 
bases of each name, and a lot of times it's based on the number of carbons. So methane is one, ETH, ethane is two, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane are the root words, and then the formulas that come from those change based on the different types of bonds that are in them. Okay? There's root words. The key to every name given in a compound in organic chemistry has a root. That's a lot of times based on the number of carbons. And the suffixes, A-N-E, E-N-E, or Y-N-E, are based on the type of bonds that go between those different types of hydrocarbons. Some of them have prefixes if they have a specific structure like this one, which is in a circular or a cycle. This is called cyclopentane because it's in a uh, circular or a ring type shape. So there are roots and then suffixes and sometimes prefixes based on the way in which those formulas look. Hydrocarbons and rings. You might be thinking that all the hydrocarbons are chains of carbon atoms with two ends that look kind of like this. Here's an example of hexane. Some mo molecules contain rings. You can see the structure of two different molecules in figure 9. The carbon atoms of the hexane bond together to form a closed ring containing six carbons. Each carbon atom still has four bonds. The prefix cyclo in their names tells you that the molecules are cyclical or ring-shaped, as in they go into a circle like this. So instead of the carbon being bonded to hydrogen each time, the carbons can actually bond to themselves and form this cyclical or ring-type shape, which makes it really, really strong. Ring structures are not common in chemical compounds. Many natural substances such as sucrose, glucose, and fructose are ring structures. If you recognize those, those are different types of sugar, and that's the shape that those sugars often have. Ring structures can contain one or more double bonds. That wraps up our reading for what would be lesson one. Your assignment looks like this, simple organic compounds for Tuesday. It asks you to complete the following sentences using the correct terms, then circle the term in the word search. What I would do is go back through your reading, and if you go back to the beginning of this section, you'll see here your vocabulary. You've got organic compound, hydrocarbon, saturated hydrocarbon, unsaturated hydrocarbon, and isomer as your new vocabulary terms, and then you've got them highlighted right in the reading itself. So if you need to match up a definition that's going to be on your worksheet to one from the reading itself, you can find them here. You can also look in the glossary of your textbook as well. I'm going to read through these and then give you a chance to finish this on your own. Number one, the word blank means derived from a living organism. Number two, organic compounds are alike in that they all contain blank. What do all organic compounds have? What is that special element that makes them organic? Number three, compounds made up of carbon and hydrogen are called. That one's a kind of a dead giveaway because it's talking about hydrogen and carbon. Number four, the simplest hydrocarbon is the gas used for heating and cooking or blank. You might need to do some reading in terms of your context for hydrocarbons. These go right in order. That answer is probably right in here. Number five, when all bonds of a hydrocarbon are blank, the molecule is saturated. So I would look to where it talks about something being saturated right here. Number six, unsaturated hydrocarbon molecules may have double or triple blank. What makes them unsaturated? Here's an example in the reading, and it just shows you those down here. Number seven, hydrocarbons that form rings might have the prefix blank. That showed up in this portion as we read about prefixes and also in this distinction here of how they form this ring type shape and here's an example of what that prefix looks like. Number eight, compounds with the same formula but different structures are called what? Here's your term for that last portion. Once you've written all those terms correctly here you'll be able to find them in the word search. This is another good way to make sure that you have the answers up here correct because if you can't find a word that you wrote down it's probably not right. You have to find that word in here that would uh, give you the clarification that yep you got it right because it was one of the words you used to fill in the blank. God's blessings!